Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Okay, so it's my pleasure to welcome Donghui Feng to uh, come here and give a, give a talk to Live Labs. Hi. Uh, Dong Hui is currently at ISI down in uh, Los Angeles, so he's up here enjoying the clean air. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, d down there he works with uh, Edward Hovey, who was his um, thesis supervisor. Um, and uh, Dong Hui um, graduated yeah. in December, yeah. so now he's a doctor. And he's going to talk about uh, some uh, threaded discussion yes. analysis that he's been doing recently. Yes. Thanks very much. Hi. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for coming to my talk. Uh, the talk the, the, my talk is Knowledge Analysis Towards Automatic Question Answering for Discussion Forums. During this talk, I will first introduce our motivations. Then we focus on two sub-problems, uh, sub which are uh, fundamental to applications to on online discussions. So the first one is the topic analysis, and the second one we call the conversation focus detection. And we also show our preliminary uh, application for question answering and extend our discussion to other applications. And we'll close this talk with conclusions and uh, future work. Now first, why do we need to uh, deal with uh, online discussion forums and even deal with automatic question answering system? So right now, there are more and more online learning and distance education programs take, uh, take place on the web. So we found it's particularly interesting and very useful to facilitate online learning using discussion boards. And this happens in U.S.'s distance education network. And the instructor always complained to us there's too many amounts, uh, too many questions being asked simultaneously, and many of them being discussed over time repeatedly. So our goal is to providing answers to student questions automatically or semi-automatically. In the long term, we want to provide a uh, <coughs> way towards automatic question answering in a web-based format. So first, let's look at the challenges for question answering on discussion forums. The traditional question answering, uh, most of them are factoid questions. And the questions usually contain only one sentence. And the questions can be answered with a short phrase. For example, who is the president of the U United States? You can answer it with a short phrase like George Bush. But uh, it's not the case for question answering in the discussion forums. The questions on discussion forums may contain multiple sentences, and the questions may not be obvious and easy to reprint with a, with a simple schema. And for example, the student may say, I have been in trouble doing this, this, and blah, 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 and what uh, can anyone help? And also, the answers need, to more, need more explanations. You cannot just use one short phrase. We also need to exploit the structure of the data corpus. For example, the discussion thread is not a simple flat corpus. Every, they have relations between messages. And we also would like to uh, provide answers in a human-like way. Here are some uh, are two example uh, questions in our discussion forums. So in the first one, you can see the student just uh, describe his situation, and the question is just like, what should I do? So you cannot reprint with a simple knowledge schema. And the second one is, he describes his situation, and the question is, any ideas on what, why the difference? So it's not formal language, and it's not easy to reprint with a simple schema. So the text here is not, not fa uh, factored questions, and the, they are not very incoherent. So we need a very specific technology to address this kind of situation. So let's first look at the question answering structure for discussion forums. Generally, we have three steps. Uh, the first step, you need to question analysis. You need to identify a question and the target answer you need to provide. The second step, you need some thread analysis for answer extraction. So basically, to extract answers, you need to understand two questions. The first question is, what has been discussed during the, on the discussion thread? We solve this. We answer this question by doing uh, topic analysis across the threads. And also, we model the topic shift within individual, individual threads. And the second one question is, 
how are these related during the discussion. So <coughs> we do this by another sub problem is detect the conversation focus of the threat. So we do this in a Yudanki model, in a graphic based Yudanki model, and we'll show that the details in the uh, next uh, slides. The last step for question answering is answer generation. You need to generate reply messages once you identify the desired answer. So in this talk, we'll basically focus on the two sub problem in step two. So the, uh, first, I will address the problem for topic analysis in discussion threads. For this question, for topic analysis, we, uh, the problem is we need to automatically uh, classify discussion thread topics and model the topic shifts within each thread. And by doing that, we, need, we can provide a better understanding of the human conversations for, uh, in discussion threads, and with, which can be used for, for discussion data mining. And what's the difficulties? The difficulties in discussion threads is not very coherent. It's just like a human conversation, but people have more freedom to explore. And also, it's hard to acquire training data. It's not feasible to ask the instructor, ask the student to label the data. Our problem is how can we get the label? Uh, how can we get the label data to to, to conduct topic uh, topic classification? So here's our solution. Our solution is so we do a new approach to classifying discussions using a Zocchio style classifier. By doing this, we use very little cost of data labeling, and we also induce a cost domain ontology from a canonical text to build in discussion topic profiles. Here we applied the approach for Zocchio style classifier. For Zocchio, class, uh, Zocchio style classifier, I start from a sitting data set, and you can uh, basically it talks about how you can update the profile vector, and you update the profile vector and keep it validated by new data. The classification decision is to, for individual new coming messages, you are trying to match the coming message with the original profile vector and make a decision of the current topic. But for our, top, uh, our problem, our focus is on how to reduce the human labeling cost. So we, focus, we use the simplified version. So the problem now came to us how to build a profile vector. The profile vector could be a term set. The traditional Zocchio style classifier uh, rely on pre-labeled data sets for building and updating a profile vector. But this is not feasible for us because we, we cannot have instructor, cannot have students to label them, and it is not feasible. And we derive a profile vector with this cost on data labeling. We induce a cost domain ontology from a canonical text. By canonical text, by topic ontology, we, are, we mean a hierarchy of topic categories and term sets and technical terms associated with that topic. So we use a canonical text. Actually, here we uh, used a, uh, in a textbook for our, uh, operating system uh, class. So we delete topic categories uh, in table of contents and term indexes at both either at the beginning of the uh, textbook and at the end of the textbook. We try to associate them with the numbers the uh, term uh, appears on the textbook. So we got a t from the table of contents, we got 131. Uh, topical categories, and from the term index, we got uh, 14, uh, 1,420 1400 technical terms. Here is our uh, an example of topic ontology in taxing. So we are by doing this, we are actually turning a textbook into a training data. So this is a table of content, and we have the keyword index like this, and we can always associate the keyword terms with the uh, topics in, discuss, uh, in the table of contents. For example, we link the se secure hash function with digital signatures, and we also link the stream cipher with, uh, with the algorithm as a topic, and we can do similar for all of the, them. And we got a topic ontology, and we got the topic ontology tree. It's like you have the security topic, and you ha on the leaf node, you have individual uh, keyword terms. The difference between this one and uh, other ontologies for every leaf node, you actually have a frequency of the terms. So by doing this, you're actually uh, turning the whole textbook into a training set, but you don't need to human label it 
you just take advantage of the numbers and make the association. Oh uh, yes, the table of contents and the keyword indexes. So for discussion uh, classification, it's not like the, uh, the individual single document. You have basically two strategies to make uh, your decision. You can the first one you can classify the the full thread as one unit, which we call it classify as a whole. You can also has uh, different uh, strategies, which we call uh, classify by dominance. But by this one, we refer to individual dominant, uh, dominant uh, elements in the discussion thread. You make your decision based on the dominant element. So here are six dominant, uh, dominant elements we have uh, computed. The first one, we compute the, the maximum number of topics, uh, of times a topic is mentioned in all messages. The second one is we got the nearest topic based on the weighted voting schema. Uh, from individual messages. We, uh, we also have the nearest topic based on the message with the largest classification score. And we, uh, we also look at the initial message and the closing message. The last, the, the last uh, dominant value we, we call the, la the longest continuous sequence of the whole thread. We are trying to analyze the relations of the dominant values and the whole uh, discussion thread. So from the syllabus of the instructor, we have six topics in the in the whole semester. We match these six topics into uh, match this uh, with the table of contents table, and we also match table of contents table with keyword index. So there are two level mapping. By doing this, we have topic pro vectors uh, associated with different keyword terms. So here are the numbers of the messages we classified. So we have individual individual messages classified into different topics. And here's the trend analysis for topic distribution over time. So in this graph, uh, uh, axis X, every, every uh, time period represents a bad week. And we can see in every uh, particular time po uh, point of time, we can see one topic dominates the other discussions. And here we got the graph shapes close match the uh, the cost syllabus. So, for example, if, if you look at the period three, the, this topic is, is dominant, dominant uh, across the whole discussion. This match the discussion, the, the instructor syllabus, because this one was at, was taught at that particular time. Does that tell us that that topic generated the most discussion then? Uh, yes. So, at, at, here is the number of the message for individual topic. So, at this time, you have this topic uh, this number of uh, discussion on this topic, this number of discussion on this topic. So this one, all of these uh, topics are dominated by this topic. So, so topic, is that topic five? Uh, I think it's, yes. It's so that, is that the most, the thing that they are the most difficult to with uh, Not the most difficult, it's just the hard topic that, at that time. So here are three examples of the discussion, discussion threads. We have, we look at the discussion, they have different uh, uh, characteristics. If you look at the, this, this thread, this thread is very, very coherent. Every, top, every message is about the same topic, and this one, only one message of the topic, and this one is much more varied. Uh, but very interesting, you, you can find this particular message, you found this message is not classified into any uh, particular topics. We look at this per message and found this one is a, a acknowledgement uh, message. It's just like thank you. So that for this kind of uh, message don't, that don't contain any technical terms, uh, we got it classified as uh, the default class there. So we also look at the topic of coherence. So we measure the coherence by the, by the portion of the maximum frequency of topic discussed in, the one, in one thread. And we found in that class, most of them are uh, high and medium, uh, of high and medium coherence. But this is for a graduate class. For undergraduate class, it's very different. The undergraduate class is more, uh, it's not so coherent because people, you know, they don't, don't follow the discussion rule very often. So we have, 
we have the coherence curve and we have buckles for individual uh, degree. So for example, the low it means uh, from the coherence score from 0 to 0.4, and, and this one uh, from 0.4 to 0.8. We also measure the, uh, the accuracy of different uh, classification. And we can see that you, if you apply the classify as a whole uh, strategy, and you can also uh, make the classification based on the individual dominance value dominant element, and we found that this dominance value gets the best, best score, especially when you look at the low and the medium coherence thread. This one is particular much better. So for this, for this overall system, if you look at the uh, accuracy score, it's 72%. It's, it's not that great, but the good thing is we don't have any uh, human labeling. So it's very useful when you don't have the uh, human label data uh, available. And you can just apply a similar uh, approach to extract ontology and apply the uh, same uh, classification strategy. So, so how is this, how are these accuracy scores created then if you don't have human uh, This one, this, is, this one is a, uh, uh, in this experiment we do have the human label to, to check that because we need a good standard to evaluate. But this one, uh, this system tells us uh, we using the dominance value we can get a better uh, understanding of the threads than the overall uh, as uh, one document. So your numerator up there actually came from human labeling. I'm sorry? The, the, you actually did go human label in order to validate. Yes, yes. This is good standard data. So we have to you know, ha have the people to annotate this. So any questions so far for this one? So this problem, uh, there are two, there are, uh, two um, Points we, we want to make is first you you can reduce human labeling cost by inducing on, ontology from the canonical textbook, and the second one is when you look at the when you do the classification for threads, you need to take care of, of the individual message and the whole the whole thread. They, are, they have different relationship depending on your application. So your classification technique is pretty much. Uh, like frequency of the words? Uh, classification, uh, yes. So, did, did you try, did you look at other classification techniques? Uh, linear regression or SVMs? Uh, actually, uh, this one is, uh, you are talking about how to build your profile vector. Yeah. So the profile vector, we, classification. Uh, yes, yes. But for classification, um, if you have Obviously, you can do uh, SVM or other approach with uh, classification, but that one you need uh, uh, individual uh, individual uh, uh, message. I mean the training data. But here we don't have the training data. We only have the profile vector. We we don't know how many instances we have. We only have the profile vector for this particular topic. Mm. Don't you have like um, to get this profile vector? You have a Uh, I think we can do uh, some preliminary test, but but for uh, this configuration, we don't have that. We only have the profile vector. We have the new uh, unclassified data, and we uh, apply the profile vector on, uh, up, uh, on top of the raw data to get the classification. But if you have the labels for the zero data, you can you can train uh, SVM for sure. So the first sub problem answers uh, what have been discussed on within individual thread, but how are they related? Here we we, uh, we mentioned this by conversation focus detection. So if you look at uh, the one example of the discussion thread, a student may start to uh, ask a question, and he may uh, he may jo uh, join this discussion and make some elaboration, and some people may may jump into this discussion and ask questions. And some people make, make suggestions, answers, elaborations, and you can have some uh, uh, acknowledgement. So this, message, uh, this thread contains several messages, but not all of them are of equal, important, equal importance. So if we look at this message, and we found this one contains the most informa informative message. Uh, so we, we call this the conversation focus. So <coughs> next, we'll 
try to uh, work on the problem given different different features, different factors to take into account. How can we decide which one is the most authoritative uh, message? So we model the relationship between uh, discussion message using speech act. By speech act, it means the relationship between uh, different messages. And we look at, we analyze our data sets and we found there are three types of uh, speech acts. The first one is the inform, which means you give, you give information, like you give uh, uh, an answer, you give a suggestion. The second type is the request. Request means you, you are asking questions, you are making some co uh, command to ask some people to take a reaction. And also you have the interpersonal speech act, so which means acknowledgement, correction, objection. So corresponding to these three categories, we have uh, 13 speech acts. So we give the spe specific uh, definition. For example, the first one is acknowledgement. It's a confirm or acknowledge the previous message. And also we found speech act has different valence. By valence, we mean it's an attitude uh, from the current message, message toward previous message. For example, the, if the balance is uh, positive, it means it support, agree, or like previous message. Uh, it's, it's like the sentiment analysis, but it's, it's at the document level. So it's, and if the balance is negative, it means it object or dislike or disagree with previous message. For all other, for all other speech actors, it's like neutral. You, when you make a description, there's no specific uh, uh, attitude toward the previous message. So for thread representation, so we represent a thread as a graph. So we represent the individual message as a node. And we mess, uh, the edge is the detect, uh, direct edges for the speech act relation. And here are some uh, notation. The F means all the children of the particular message MI. And children, by children and parents, I mean children are the nodes that appear earlier in the discussion. And the parents, means the notes, they appear later. For example, you have a discussion, uh, uh, you have a message, and some people join in this discussion and make a uh, correction. So there is a link between these two messages, but the last one points to the previous one. So the last one is uh, parents, and the previous one is uh, children. So we, do, we conduct the speech act annotation. So we have the corpus, which include uh, 640, threads, and uh, more than uh, 2,200 messages. We conduct speech, uh, speech act annotation. We have one annotator, but it's too expensive for human annotation. So we, st uh, we conduct a human agreement study with two annotators, and which is about 15 threads and 50, uh, 58 messages. And the agreement is uh, uh, roughly 82%. So in, our, in this study, we use uh, 314 threads uh, with approximately 300 messages. So here are speech act annotation analysis in our corpus, and we have speech act uh, distributions. We have most. Uh, we have uh, acknowledgement is approximately four uh, four percent, and uh, uh, questions is approximately one third of the whole disc uh, whole discussion corpus. So now the problem is how to quantify these features in the graph representation and make a, a quantitative analysis and get the conversation focus of individual threads. So we generate three links, three weighted links with link generation functions. The first one we call the lexical link generation. So the lexical sim, uh, link generation is based on the lexical similarity between messages. So if you have two messages, uh, MI and MG. The direction is uh, from MI to MG, and the the weight is uh, the weight is the constant similarity between these two messages. And also, uh, different people may post different messages, and they are not equally authoritative. So here we define a score, which we call the poster trustworthiness score. So, for example, if it's an instructor, you can trust him more than about one hundred percent. But if it's a uh, students, it's, it's much less, it's not uh, so trustful. So we compute the poster trustworthiness score by analyzing the positive feedback 
of the portion of the predictive feedback for that particular person. And the poster links, whenever a person posts a message, that means the poster itself has a self uh, support, uh, self evidence, uh, self support for that particular message. So the poster link is a self pointing. So you have this message and you have a self pointing, uh, self support uh, links. So the, the weight is the poster charge one is score. And here are some sample uh, poster charge one is scores. So, for example, for poster ID with 93, your total response is 20, and you have a positive response uh, as 18, and you have the and you get the charge one score is 0.9 percent. You're defining positive and negative based on the balance. Yes, uh, yeah, based on the balance. Yes. So another another factor we need to take care of is the speech act link strength. So. We have different categories of speech actors. They are not equally uh, strong. So we trying to compute how different the, the speech act strengths. So we roughly it's not obvious to uh, make uh, to compute this, uh, but we do that in an alternative way. So we try to generate this in a uh, in a genera uh, generative uh, fashion. And every speech act is made by individual person. So we are trying to say the speech exercise is a weighted average of individual persons. And we have, if the balance is negative, we have the uh, speech act, uh, we have the six signal function. And we all, after we got all the speech act uh, strengths, and we scale them into uh, zero, 1. And if you have a speech act, if you have a speech act in speaking two messages, if the, the, the weight is this score and the direction, if this uh, speech act is neutral, it, is, it means it's not a attitude toward other message. It's a self-supporting one. So we have a, we have a another link generates as self-pointing. But if the speech act is either uh, positive or negative, that means it's an attitude toward the previous one. So you 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 generate the speech act strings between the two messages. It's not a self-pointing one. So here are the speech act uh, the speech act strings goes. So if you compare the negative ones with neutral and positive, we can find the negative is, is much lower. So here means if you have a correction relation between two messages, you have this number of, of uh, confidence of the previous message. That means you, you don't support the previous me message very much. But if you have an acknowledgment or complementary, that means you agree with the previous message and you have a higher score of the support. Uh, yes. From the entire data set. Yes. Which, just remind me what were the numbers of that data set? How big was the data set? The big set is uh, 314 threads with uh, about uh, 1,200 messages. So here is an example of the link generations. So suppose we have the speech act annotation uh, for this uh, particular thread. And we, you have questions, suggestions, elaborations, and you have objections. All of them are from, are from a different person. So first, you want to uh, generate the links with uh, the lexical similarity. So what was being discussed? So by doing this, you get the relation between messages of how, how similar they are, uh, how similar the, the content. So the, the second one is who said it. Who said it is actually the poster charge one is called. So every message has a, has a poster. The poster ha has different charge one is called, and it's a self-pointing one. Alternatively, you can build a virtual node here, and you can associate the virtual node with uh, individual message and say this one is a support of the, the previous message. But we don't do that way. We just do a self-pointing way. The, set, the last one, how did, it, how did it influence in the, in the discussion? It actually means the speech act strength. How, how are they related with, between different messages? So depends on depend, depending on the balance of speech act, you can either have the uh, self pointing one, or you can also have the uh, the link between the previous message one, between between uh, message pairs. So after that. So is this assuming only one speech act per message? Um, every link is one speech act, but one message can can have multiple. 
can have multiple uh, speech acts uh, with previous message, but for any particular pair, there is one, only one. Oh, sorry. So we integrate all the weighted links and and get the relation. We quantified all the features into uh, into <coughs> into the uh, weighted arcs. And the next the prob the next step is given the relations between the message, how can we identify which one is the most uh, authoritative one? And we do this with a graph-based axiom. Here we explore the, the his axiom. This one, this axiom was proposed by Klinberg in 1999. So for ev in this axiom, every node has two identity scores. One is the half score, the, the other is the authority score. Half score is to measure the measure the quality of the message as a hub pointing to useful resources. And the authority score is the measure the quality of the message as a resource itself. So we update we update the we have the iterative opting formula and uh, we uh, given the previous uh, weighted uh, graphs. So by doing this we can re the the full uh, messages in individual threads. So here is our experimental setup. So we have uh, three, 14 threads, and we have uh, 13 messages. And the average length per thread is uh, like 4.16 4 uh, messages. So here are the distributions of our uh, experimental data. For evaluation, we are trying to measure the correctness in identifying uh, uh, conversation focus. The system for a given, given a discussion thread, the input is the, the full thread, the output is the ranked list of all the messages and the candidate for conversation focus. Uh, for evaluation, we evaluation in, we're using two metrics. The first one is the precision score, and the second one is uh, MR score, which is a mutual reciprocal rank. So this one is a, a very, is a standard measure in question answering system. We also, have the human annotator annotates the golden, uh, golden standard data set. And our baseline system, we have two baseline systems. The first baseline system is a naive one. We try, uh, we, it's a random guess on the conversation focus with a thread. And the second baseline system, we are trying to find if we can find a complex answer or simple answer in the thread, we'll take that one as the conversation focus. We are trying to compare how is this related to our axiom. Here is our system performance. So we have 314 uh, threads, and we got baseline system one with the precision is tw uh, 27%, and the MRR score is 0.539. Uh, and since every node has uh, two entity scores, so we have two sets of results. The first one is based on the authority score, and the second one is based on the half score. And we incrementally add different features with, uh, with link generation functions. And we can find the best score we got is, is for the posters, uh, the poster link, link generations and the speech act uh, generations. So that means, given the poster child warning score and the speech act score, we can have a better performance to identify which message is most authoritative or uh, information in a particular thread. And we'll pick up that one as a conversation focus. So we also, for graph-based algorithm, we also tried the, the page rank. But unfortunately, for page rank, we got a precision uh, is 47% and MRR is uh, only 69%. So we look at the situation and we look at the two different algorithms. It seems to us his is more suitable for our task because by intuition, his is trying to measure the authority of the particular message. And page rank cannot model the particular situation uh, better. Could you, sorry, could you just go back one slide? Yes. So, for authority, in, in both authority and hub, the poster feature and a speech act, yeah. scored, well, yeah, but the, if you look at poster, they, they scored pretty low. And, and that's the, um, that's the, the, the score that you computed for the author of the message? Oh, yeah, only based on that. So, so basically, that—that's kind of interesting. That if if, if you take 
by your measure the most trusted uh -huh. software, they do very poorly to, to, to predict, uh, uh, predicting, it does very poorly predicting the most relevant message. Um, I think you are talking about a different baseline system. You know, but here, we have the speech, uh, the poster score, but we don't take, we don't just take the most uh, trusted person. We still using the graph algorithm to see how this propagates in the whole graph. So if you only take the particular message, I think the answer may be different. So just, just could you just recap what this means in this poster, what this so, indicates with the, with, with the poster line there? Oh, yes. So for all the different features, we are actually using the same algorithm. It's his, his algorithm. So if we only have lexical feature, we only generate lexical links in, a, in a his graph. If we have only poster, uh, poster feature, we only generate post links in the graph. So we are, if, we, if you look at this line, you have poster links, and still you, you're using the graph algorithm to try to say how we rank all the uh, messages in the okay. whole thread. So could you just remind me what the poster, how the poster graph is drawn in? The poster graph is... Uh, so if you look at this one, so actually we have three steps to add individual links. So if you only have the poster, we only add the poster, the poster links. Oh, sorry, poster links means the actual thread structure then? Uh-huh, yeah, within, within a thread, yeah. So poster doesn't refer to the author? Uh, poster means a, a, a self-pointing uh, support, self support of the individual message. So if you have this message, you know this, this message is posted by some particular person. And you have the particular person's trust what's in the score. And you have the, uh, the support information using these links. But that, but that surely doesn't create a very... That, means, that produces a graph of single nodes then, surely. Uh, you have so each, each of these poster links is just a link on the, that node. Yes. So it doesn't produce a graph, it just produces a set of... Uh, but, it, but it also has, has a... Oh, yes, you're right, you're right. Actually, uh, it doesn't, yes. So this poster only is identical to anthology score for each poster? I'm sorry, uh, poster... If, you, if, you, if your graph is only for posters, if you don't use any other features, uh -huh. then your resulting score will be equal to the authority score for each poster. Oh, yes, yes, you're right, you're right, yes, 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 yeah, you're right. So, so even then it's kind of surprising. Yes, yes. So, so it does... It does reduced to just being the quality of the uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. And then so on this, it, it suggests that that is not a good predictor for the best. Just the quality of the poster is not a good predictor for the best answer. Well, in fact, uh -huh. I think it's random based on the average number of posts, or average number of messages per thread, that you could pick one at random and do just as well in terms of precision. No, I think the, the reason might be in the, in the whole discussions, the instructor does not always participate in the discussion. So you cannot say there are some group of, of the posters, they are very trustful. So it might be the case, only the instructor is the most trust, trustful, but he didn't participate in the discussion very often. And all other students, they, they can, in some situations, this guy gets the, uh, the best answer, and in some situations, this guy gets the best answer. So it's hard to say, only this guy can get the best answer. So, so let me ask you another question about the data then. Um, does every thread conclude with a, a, an answer? Or are some threads that kind of, there are some questions and some discussion, but it never really gets resolved? Yes, that's possible. But yeah, do you that have a sense for how, much of, how many of the threads are like that versus how many of the threads get, get to an answer, a satisfying answer? Uh, I think like... Um, 80% we should have, have some answer or suggestions. So only um, only very small portion of that will just uh, end up with nothing. Okay. Yeah. So when you use several features, how do you come up with them into a single way? Oh, so we have individual links, so we just uh, combine combine the link weights. Is it just some, some, some Yes, yeah, yes. Is it weighted some or? Uh, we set them equal, equal important. So the, the alphabet, alphabet gamma is uh, plus one. So, 
Now the question comes to us, how important are the speech acts? So the problem is we need accurate uh, speech acts, and this we obtain from the annotation. So when people may ask, in your, in your system, how, how does the performance drop if the speech acts are only partially correct or, or partially available? So we study this by intentionally pollute the speech act annotations. So if you look at the x-axis, so this means we pollute the 20% of the speech act annotation, and we get a performance at this level. And if we pollute the speech act annotation by 40%, we get this level. So this, this graph tells us, uh, can give us roughly how much uh, performance you can expect given a, a suitable speech act annotation. And also, what if the speech act are missing? So this, for this graph, we studied if we randomly remove speech act annotation from the corpus. So for example, the, the human annotator may miss something. So what if they miss the annotation? And you can get the roughly the, the performance graph like this. So suppose you, you miss 20% of the speech act annotation, and you, you can still expect the MR score is between 75 and, 80, uh, and 0.8. So this gives you intuition. So how much performance, how, how is the performance you, you can expect? So next we'll, uh, in the previous two sections we have mentioned the two, we have discussed the two sub-problems. So we answer this, uh, we answer two questions. The first one is how, what are discussed in the, in the discussion threads? We solve this with the topic analysis. And the second one is how are they related? We answer this with a conversation focus detection. And as we, uh, we claim that, we argue that they are, most, uh, they are very important for applications, such as question answering. So question answering, basically, you have to take care of step one and step three. Now for step one, so this is a pre preliminary uh, prototype. That's what we did in our early stage of this work. So, <coughs> so question analysis, it, you already know it's hard to represent the question target. And there is no immediate way how, how you match the student's questions with the discussion archives. So we're simulating the question matching with our techniques, which is the similarity score. The answer generation, we're providing answers by applying a discussion board. The discussion board, we need to take care of the strategy, how, how to trigger a discussion board. So, we look at the, we investigated the whole discussion uh, corpora, and we found that most of the questions appear, most of the first posts are questions. So our discussion board strategy is only take, we only take care of the first, uh, first post with questions. So by, by doing this, that we are not claiming this is a dialogue system. We can only provide the questions for, uh, for provide answers for the first uh, question, first message in the thread. So the matching student interest, as we mentioned, we, we use the IR technique to roughly uh, match the student interest with the TF-IDF uh, similarity scores. So now, the simple, we have another, we have this discussion board apply a simple answer extraction strategy using thread analysis rules. The relation rules is, the first is relation rule. So if there's a correction, correction relation between two messages, we'll replace the previous message with the current one. But if there's an objection, we'll remove the previous one. So also, when you look at the different message, you have some boundary. If there's an acknowledgment, acknowledgment uh, speech act, that means you already consider the previous one as the answer, and we stop the search. And if you have a narrow question, that means you go, you go to a, another discussion. So we also stop the search. So this is a prototype we built for in our early stage, but and we believe a more intelligent QA system needs to integrate with the two fundamental uh, parts, as we have discussed earlier. So that's the uh, that's, uh, uh, initial analysis for our answer generations. So by doing automatic question answering, there's always an assumption. So you assume you have answered in the discussion archives. But what if you don't have? So we, we, have, we did another. We did another experiment, uh, with, which we call all in. That means if we have the questions, we also put the the threads, uh, the whole thread in the corpus, and we uh, we are sure the answer is already in the discussion. And by doing that, we can 
we apply our extraction strategy, and we find the exact answer and the good answer. Uh, for most questions, we can find the exact and good answer. But if we remove the answer for that question, that means we are not sure if there is answers in the discussion corpus, and we get uh, a relatively lower, a uh, much lower score. That so this uh, convince uh, this uh, coin. This, can, this again convinces us to do a question answering. You must have some uh, default assumption uh, available. The, the assumption is you must have the answer for the, pre, for the message. Otherwise, you cannot expect the system. So, like you, if you query the web, you don't have you're not, you're, you don't have the knowledge for your, that particular query. So, you, you cannot expect the, the web can give you the answer. So here. It's our discussion bot in a real system. So if you have this question, and our, our discussion bot will automatically uh, extract the answer. And if, and also we give a pointer to the discussion, the pointer to the uh, question, the most similar discussion. So if you are not sure, you, if you don't satisfy, you can go to the original discussion and make your decision. So for other applications, we believe the Speech act, uh, speech act modeling can also be applied to the argument analysis. So similar to sentiment analysis, this is the uh, opinion at the document level. And also, given the speech act and also the poster associated with the messages, we can expect this can be used for social network analysis. And if we have the discussion threads relationship between each other, and we, if we have the graph, we can make a better summarization of the whole thread. We don't need to take care of the full thread. Here's the conclusion of the future work. In this talk, uh, we analyzed the QA infrastructure for discussion forums. And we focused on two, uh, two uh, principal problems for answer extraction. And we, uh, for topic analysis, we uh, conduct the topic classification for and investigate the relation between messages and the thread. And for conversation focus detection, we <coughs> I think this is the first uh, quantitative analysis for discussion uh, threads. And we actually combining the natural language processing analysis and IR techniques. And the feature we use uh, future induced link generalization functions to integrate different different factors. The the for the future work, the we expect to add automatic speech act analysis, and we also would like to, for zero system, we would like to integrate the topic analysis and the conversation focus detection into a real uh, question answering framework. And this is limited to our particular domain. If you want to move this to an open domain, uh, we would like to have a robust system to filter the spams. Because here is a discussion forum for students, so relatively students has some limitation. They they have. They are also already. They are also graded based on their action. So normally, the spam is not a big issue here. So this is uh, this is the end of the main part of my talk. For other work during my PhD, I my thesis work is on information extraction. Uh, we investigate the information extraction procedure uh, for modern complex tasks, and we proposed a new impressive, impressive information extraction framework to model the relation between different uh, factors. And to, uh, I have been working on the web-based question answering system for human biography facts. So we build patterns and we, build, we learn patterns from uh, uh, the data datasets and we bootstrap that and we apply these patterns to extract uh, human biography facts from the web. And most recently, we have worked on the text mining for biomedical research articles. So we convert the research articles, the biology research articles from PDF to plain text. And we are trying to extract the individual experiment information uh, from the full, uh, full text. So in my first year, I also worked on natural language understanding system. We built a semantic parser for dialogue, dialogue system, which was used for to train uh, U.S. soldiers. And this is a hybrid system based on uh, including a financial state machine uh, parser and a statistical parser. And in addition to that, I was also working on 
machine translation. Uh, when I was in Microsoft Research Asia, I worked on the English Chinese named entity alignment. So given the English named entity, we're trying to find the possible translation in a parallel Chinese purpose. So this is a joint work with uh, my other colleagues in my including my advisor at Harvey and Professor Aaron Xiao and Jiki Kim. So you may find uh, all the references uh, here and you can check out these papers uh, in my web page. All right, thank you. So I have a question, sure. Yeah, I have a, I have a question. So um, how hard do you think the speech act detection to be, you mentioned the work of Carvalho and Cohen. Um, how, what, what challenges do you see there? I mean, do you think it's going to be... Uh, the challenge for that one is uh, we see you can do the speech act classification in a collective way and you can get a best answer. In collective way, I mean you take into account the whole, the, 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 the whole graph. But to do the speech, uh, actually there was a, there is a project ongoing uh, in ISI. They are doing the speech act and uh, classification. But for that one, you need to take care of the, the, uh, the green granularity of the speech act. So you cannot, for example, you, you probably need to merge some speech act. But I think right now they get the performance is like 85% uh, uh, accuracy. And does that also include the sort of segmentation of the text? The segment, we extract uh, the text telling to segment the individual message. But the most of the message seem to be very short. So if you use the text telling, do you normally get only one segment? So this may be different from the, the real web page. The real web page, you need to segment, but here we have the access to the database. So we can directly take out the individual message. Yeah. One thing I was kind of confused about, uh, both in the talk and in the paper, is that you talk about the Yes. Do you have a comparison of how close you can get without the speech acts? Well, I'm just confused about how much the speech acts help. How close do you get just from finding uh, these similar words in the thread? Can you actually narrow down? Uh, what are your accuracy rates, I guess? Oh, you mean without the speech act uh, uh, analysis? Uh, no, actually we, we didn't compare that, yes, we don't have that number, but uh, we found that the speech act relation is very useful, so I, I guess it, it should be top down, so top down, yeah. Right, I'm yeah. just trying to figure out how useful the speech act is. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we don't have the, the results right now, but I guess we can do an uh, experiment uh, offline, I'll talk okay. to you. All right, thank you.